Hello. Hi, Mr. Albertini. It's uh, Ryan Willard. Long time no talk. Yeah, it's been a very, very long time. Remember when I was in fourth grade and during class you were helping me with my math and then someone farted and I was like, oh my gosh, Mr. Albertini farted and everyone screamed and laughed at you. Yes, yes I do. Well, I was the one that actually farted and I wanted to apologize. I'm really sorry. Apology accepted. Wait. Shouldn't you be at work right now at the 10 News? Yes, I gotta go. But I appreciate you so, so much. Bye. All right, you can check off Mr. Albertini. How many more teachers are on your thank you, I'm sorry list? 17 more. Okay. Well, today we're celebrating World Teachers Day. It's a day to appreciate and thank our teachers. And it's been held every year on October 5th since 1994. I'm Pamela Kirkland. I'm Ryan Willard. It's Wednesday, October 5th. And this is the 10 News. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hi, I'm Sadie, and I'm from Poway, California. My teacher, Miss Sovereign, is the best. We love listening to the 10 News. Thanks for keeping it real with us kids. Go Miss Sovereign's class. Hi, I'm Harper. I'm Frankie. And I'm Avery. We want to give a special shout out to our teacher, CJ, who left us last year. He was a great teacher, and we really miss him. And his CJ dance. Happy World Teacher Appreciation Day! In addition to World Teachers Day, we have a whole bunch of news to share with you, tenors. Here are 10 things you need to know right now. Some of the biggest news of the past week is that a Category 4 hurricane struck Cuba, Florida, and South Carolina. Hurricane Ian brought wind speeds of up to 150 miles per hour, and more than 2 million people don't have power. NASA had to postpone its Artemis moon launch again due to the hurricane. And across the world, the Philippines is reeling after Typhoon Noru made landfall. Locals had little time to prepare because the storm grew very strong very quickly. Scientists say climate change is making hurricanes more powerful, but not more frequent. (sighs) We have an update on the war in Ukraine. Russia held illegal referendums in four Russian-occupied areas of Ukraine. What does that mean? Basically, Russia is trying to claim that those four areas are a part of Russia, but the UN and international community have said these referendums are illegal. Putin has now annexed these regions of Ukraine, which is similar to what happened in the Ukrainian region of Crimea in 2014 when Russian fighting in Ukraine first began. This is terrible. In other Russian news, the Nord Stream pipeline delivers gas from Russia to the EU, and late last week leaks were reported. The U.S. and NATO allies say Russia has sabotaged the pipeline, while Russia says the U.S. caused the leaks. Many European nations rely on Russian gas for heating, and with the colder months approaching, governments are under pressure to find alternatives. Aw, man. NASA crashed into an asteroid on purpose. What? The DART mission, a.k.a. Double Asteroid Redirection Test, was a huge success. DART hit the small asteroid Dimorphos and changed its path. NASA is practicing pushing asteroids around in case there's ever an asteroid, I don't know, headed for Earth. We've got two news stories from the entertainment world. First up, pop sensation Lizzo made headlines playing a 200-year-old crystal flute that once belonged to former president and founding father, James Madison. Cool! The flute was loaned to Lizzo by the Library of Congress, and it was guarded to and from her Washington, D.C. concert. And there was a big movie released this weekend. Hocus Pocus 2 came out on Disney Plus on Friday, September 30th. This sequel comes 29 years after the original Hocus Pocus premiered. Did your parents just groan about how old they are? I know I did. We at the 10 News know how they feel. It'll happen to you. In animal news, a baby wild boar, also called a piglet, was adopted by a herd of cows in Germany. 
The farmer decided the piglet can stay, so here's hoping it won't hog all the food. Sports fans are psyched that Yankee right fielder Aaron Judge has tied the record for home runs in a single season. So far, he's hit a whopping 61 homers, and with seven games left in the season, he could go on to break the record held by Roger Maris from way back in 1961. And to my tenors with little siblings, science has finally revealed the best way to get a baby to sleep. Oh, I'm listening. Oh, right, Pamela, you could use this with your little one. Using heart rate monitors, researchers from Italy tested babies as they were being put to bed. Turns out the best way to get a baby to sleep is to carry them around for five minutes, then sit with them for five minutes, then put them in their crib. I'm writing this down. Fingers crossed that baby Kirkland was listening too. And that is the 10 things you need to know right now. Data transfer complete. Here at the 10 News, we love teachers. And we know one of the challenges facing teachers today is book bans. 10 News staff writer Tessa Flannery has more on how a book gets banned. September 18th through 24th was Banned Books Week. It's a week when libraries, publishers, journalists, teachers, and readers remind the world how important books are by speaking out against book bans. But how does a book get banned? First, someone has to have an objection to the content of a book. That means they disagree with the book. Maybe they think it's not appropriate for kids, or it goes against their beliefs. Not so fast! Then they challenge the book, explaining why they think it shouldn't be in a library, in a school, or on a bookstore shelf. If their challenge is successful, the book is removed, otherwise known as banned. This year alone, the American Library Association has recorded challenges to over 1,600 books, especially books about racism, racial injustice, and the LGBTQ community. Are you kidding me? Over the past few years, more books have been published about kids that are Black, Indigenous, Latinx, or Asian, which is great news because studies show representation is a key part of building self-esteem for kids from marginalized groups. And kids' books with LGBTQ plus themes can help queer kids feel like they belong, while teaching empathy to kids who are not members of the LGBTQ plus community. Excellent! So why would anyone want to ban these books? What's the big idea? According to PEN America, a group that supports freedom of expression, most book challenges come from conservative parent groups and Republican lawmakers. These small groups say books about racial injustice and the LGBTQ plus community go against their values. But the conservative groups don't represent the views of most Americans, despite having a big impact on what is allowed to be discussed in schools. That's why Banned Book Week is important. By talking about the books we want to read, we can stand up for freedom of expression and representation for all kids and families. Nice. Of course, we should note that some books are challenged or banned for other reasons, like the book Walter the Farting Dog, which was challenged for using the words fart and farting 24 times. I'm pretty sure Ryan is trying to beat that record in this episode of The 10 News. And that's how book bans work and why they're a real problem. What do you think, Ryan? Ryan? Ryan, where are you? I snuck into a library. Shh. We need to talk to a real life librarian about these book bans. That is a great idea, Ryan. Okay, grab that interview and see you back at the office. Excuse me, sir. No phones, please. This is a library. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking for the librarian. Oh, that's me. I'm Maria Paz Allegre. Nice to meet you, Maria Paz. I haven't heard that last name before. What does it mean? In Spanish, Allegre means happy. So my students either call me Ms. Allegre or Ms. Happy. Cool. Well, hello, Miss Happy. I'm Ryan Willard. From the 10 News? You know who I am? Absolutely! Oh, you don't have to sneak around the library. You're welcome here. Well, that's not what I expected you to say, but cool. Thank you. <laughs> so how do books end up in libraries in the first place? 
That is such a good question. A lot of times it's the librarian's choice to request a book. We usually read a lot of journals and reviews that tell us about all the good books that are coming out. Sometimes kids tell us about it ahead of time and request. And sometimes there are our librarians whose only job it is to buy books for the many libraries in their city. Have you ever had to remove a book from the library because it was banned? I have never removed a banned book. I have moved some books to an older location. For example, if the book has some mature themes in it that's not appropriate for, say, kindergarten and first grade, and for some reason it's in that section, I will move it up to second or third grade. So that is the closest I've done. Are you a teacher as well as a librarian? I am. I teach at the Allen Stevenson School and I teach every grade, kindergarten through fourth grade in library. Wait, you teach library? That's a subject? It is such an important subject. And honestly, it's some of my students' favorite subjects. Every week we meet, we talk about books, we explore new literature. Sometimes we'll discuss fiction versus nonfiction, things we liked, things that we didn't like, books that we'd like to see in the library, and just about everything about books. It's really fun. Are there any secrets I should know about libraries? Ooh, a secret that you should know about a library. That is a very good question. I have one. There is a famous award and it, it goes on the medal of lots of books. So you'll probably know about it. And perhaps it's called the Caldecott Award. It goes on where the wild things are. It's gone on make way for ducklings. It's gone on for snowy day. That award is a librarian award. So librarians, every year, 16 librarians are chosen to decide on which book is the best book of the year for children. I did not know that. And what is that award called again? It's called the Caldecott Award. And can I tell you something very exciting? Yes, please. I was chosen. So actually next year, I will be one of the 16 people in the world who will choose the best picture book of the year. I'm very excited. What? <laughs> Can you tell me if you have any favorite picture books that are up for nomination? It is a secret. The answer to your question will be revealed in a big ceremony when the Caldecott Award is announced. Well, I respect your privacy and your need to keep this secret, so I'm going to ask you another question. Is there any advice you might want to tell our tenors, Miss Happy? Oh, yes. Um, I know that a lot of kids like to stick to the same books and sometimes they get a little intimidated with a big wall of books and they don't know what to do so they usually choose the thing they're familiar with and usually it's something like Dogman or Big Nate which are really good series however in my library, we do not have a dozen books. We do not have a hundred books. We have over 20,000 books and we're just one school library. So what I would do if I were you and I would like to try something new, take any book off the shelf, open it and read the first two pages. And if it's something that grabs you, then that's wonderful. And if it's something that is not for you, you can always put it back and find something new. That's what I encourage you to do. Explore the library by doing one book tasting at a time. Miss Happy, thank you so much for answering my questions. And thank you for being such an awesome librarian and teacher. Sure thing, Ryan. Keep up the good work at the 10 News. Wait, don't you have to get back to work? Ah, you're right. I gotta get back to the studio. Actually, why don't you come with me? You can even visit the trivia room and sit on the trivia throne. Well, count me in. Let's go. Okay, Pamela, next up is my old teacher, Miss Funk. This would be an easy one because she really liked me and thought I was really cool and really funny. I'm pretty sure I was her favorite. Oh, then she'll be happy to hear how much you appreciate her. Hello, Ryan Willard. Explain why you're calling me. Oh, uh, hi, Miss Funk. I, 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 I called to tell you that the smallest book in the world is called Teeny Ted from Turnip Town. I know. It's narrower than the width of a human hair. In fact, I taught you that. Now tell me why you're really calling me during my lunch break. I'm having my usual liver and onions. I, um, well, it's, it's World Teacher's Day, and I wanted to call and tell you that I just... That you're sorry for starting a water fight in the middle of my social studies class? Ryan, you did what? Oh, that. Well, technically, it wasn't a water fight, since I was the only one with water balloons. I thought you thought that was really funny. 
and cool. I did not think either of those things. I sent you to the principal's office, and you got in a lot of trouble. By the way, I'm still waiting for you to turn in your final social studies project. Okay, Miss Funk, it was nice talking to you. Just wanted to tell you how much I appreciate you teaching me. I don't know if I like this game, Pamela. Let's take a break from these awkward phone calls and get back to some important work, Rye. We need to give out some 10 new snaps to a few teachers. We're sending 10 new snaps to Mrs. Baysmore at Carolina Beach Elementary School. Yeah! And big snaps to the teachers at the San Francisco School who've been big supporters of the 10 News since we started. Well, thank you very much. Hey, teachers, do you listen to the 10 News in your classroom? Let us know and we'll give you a shout out on the show. Call 1-877-10-NEWS and leave us a voicemail or... Send us an email at hello at the 10 newscom Welcome to the trivia room. Wow, this place is glorious. I can't wait to sit on the trivia throne, Tessa. We'll hop on up on the trivia throne, Miss Happy, and get ready for today's trivia question. What is going on here? Trivia on the 10. Ryan got to visit you at your library, and I, for one, love libraries. But did you know there's a library that sits on the border between the U.S. and Canada? It's true. But can you guess which U.S. state the library is in? Is it A. North Dakota, B. Washington State, or C. Vermont? Tenors, did you guess it? Miss Happy, what's your answer? My answer is A, North Dakota. The answer is C. Oh! The Haskell Library was built in 1901, right on the border between the U.S. state of Vermont and the Canadian province of Quebec. The idea and funding came from the Canadian wife of an American merchant. It's one of the only libraries in the world that operates in two countries. Citizens of Quebec and Vermont can check out books, picnic on the lawn, and even see plays. Funnily enough, the stage is in Canada, and the audience are in the U.S. No way! That is super cool. I think I'll have to take a road trip to check it out. Thank you for having me, Tessa. Thank you for coming by, Miss Happy. Hey, Tenors, do you want to sit on the trivia throne and share your trivia knowledge? Visit the 10 newscom slash contact to get in touch, and we might have you on the show. Ryan, what are you doing with my phone? I'm calling one of your teachers to see what kind of crazy stuff you did when you were a student. Wait, what? You're calling Miss LeClaire? Yeah, it's going to be hilarious. Pamela Kirkland? H Hi, Miss LeClaire. How are you? I'm great, thanks. How is my favorite student? You're one of the best I've ever had. Straight A's, so kind, so responsible. Are you kidding me? I'm, well, thank you, Miss LeClaire. I just wanted to call and tell you how much I appreciate you and all that you do. You made such a big impact on my life, and I'll never forget when you brought the whole class chocolate from Germany. I really appreciate that. You're the best, Pamela. Thank you so much for calling. Have a great day. Wow, that was so nice. That was not at all what I planned. So I think we should probably wrap up the show. But before we do, here's a quick note for the grown-ups. Thanks for listening to the 10 News. Our show is now weekly and drops every Wednesday. But if you want some bonus content, you can join the Tenors Club on our website or on Apple Podcasts. Club members get special bonus content and more. The 10 News is a co-production of Small But Mighty Media and Next Chapter Podcasts. The 10 News creative team is thanking teachers and includes Tracy Crooks, Adam Bernard, Pete Musto, who also played Mr. Albertini today, Tessa Flannery, who played Miss Funk, and a special thanks to Jamie Albright for playing Miss LeClaire. Our production director is Jeremiah Tittle, and our executive producers are Donald Albright and show creator Tracy Leeds Kaplan. I'm Ryan Willard. And I'm Pamela Kirkland, the person that puts up with Ryan. And thanks for listening to the 10 News. Now go thank a teacher. If you're a fan of monstrous creatures, 
magical genies, <laughs> tales of witches, <laughs> mischievous goblins. <laughs> Listen to Buy Kids for Kids Story Time. We bring fairy tales, folk tales, myths, and legends to life with performances by kids from all around the world. Massachusetts, Germany, Iceland, India, New Mexico, and more. Just search for Buy Kids for Kids Storytime wherever you get your podcasts.